Hey guys, what's up? It's Steve Steele. I've been asked a few times to do a video on optimizing contact in large templates. So we're going to take a look at that real quick. I've got about five really good tips to show you that will help you lower the CPU and RAM footprint of your sample library that's loaded into contact or any of your other players. All right, so first, this template that you're looking at, this is a template that I use for Finale. I have Finale as my score editor, and it feeds MIDI data into Digital Performer. For my sample playback engine, I use Vienna Ensemble Pro. So there's three apps involved in this process. So this particular template matches what I have for my orchestral template in Finale. All right, so my film scoring template, uh, this is the orchestral part of it, but my digital performer film scoring template is about four times the size of this. Okay, so I just wanted you guys to know what you're actually looking at. I want to remind you of my system specs real quick. This particular machine has 48 gigabytes of RAM. I'm about to double that to 96. It's a 12 core. My boot up disk is a Samsung SM951 in PCIe slot 3. My sample rate has four Samsung SM951s striped. So it's a very fast read sample drive. Okay. With all that said, let's get into the five top tips on how to optimize contact. This question comes up a lot. How should you set your cores in contact when it's in your DAW or in Vienna Ensemble? The answer is you can play with this, but ultimately I believe you should set it at zero. And the reason that is, is the top DAWs are all optimized for multiprocessor support all the way down. So, so Digital Performer and Vienna Ensemble will control the multiprocessor support for contact. The three main apps that I consider the, the really good film scoring apps or the really good MIDI mock-up apps are Digital Performer, Cubase, and Logic. I know very well that those three are really good at this. All right, so turn this off. And just as a side note about that, in Vienna Ensemble, I've talked about this before, but I'll just mention it again. Notice I only have one instance open. Everything is loaded in this one instance. And I am using Mirsum. And here you can see the stage loaded with instruments. So since I only have one instance open, This one instance, I'm going to allow to use up to 22 threads. I'm going to leave two threads open, one for the DAW, one for the OS, to have completely to themselves. So uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro is limited to 22 in this instance. If I were to have two instances, I would divide that in half. So 12, or I mean, excuse me, 11 or 10. And if I had four, divide that in half. So five, six, something like that. Contacts database. So when you add a library to contact, contact scans for metadata like instrument names. So you can search in the database for instruments that you might need. But if you know your libraries really well, you know where everything is, where they're loaded, or if you already have a template set up and you're not really worried about having to search for things, what I would do is make sure both of these boxes are unchecked this one is checked by default. This one's unchecked. Definitely leave this one unchecked because it'll include samples, which are huge, and there are many of them in the database scan, and it'll increase contacts footprint by a lot. So keep this off. And I would even turn this off. And anything you have in this field, just select and remove until it's empty. All right. If you select and remove everything until it's empty, you'll save on RAM and CPU footprint. So here's the database. Now mine is empty. I emptied it on purpose. All right, I reset everything. If you want to keep things in here so you can search for them, that's fine. If you want to lower that RAM footprint, empty it. 
we can monitor contact and how it's doing, how much of what is loaded into RAM, how much is being pulled or streamed from the disk, and how much load it's placing on your CPUs. All right, so go to the monitor engine tabs and then click on CPU profiling mode and notice you'll see something load here. Right now it says off because I'm not playing, but once I hit play, you'll see a number here and that number is the percentage of the CPU that it's taking up. The object memory area is referring to the database. It's also referring to modules and some other inner parts of contact. Sample memory is the amount of memory that contact is using with samples loaded into RAM. And we're going to see this number affected quite a bit here as we optimize. Number three, the voice memory has to do with this number here, the max number of voices set. And we're also going to deal with that. We also have DFD. DFD stands for direct from disk. So contact doesn't just load all samples into RAM. It loads some of them, but it streams a lot of them. And we have control over that. And we're going to look at that in one second. And then down here you have under miscellaneous, you can watch the CPU load percentage as it's playing. This number will change as you're playing back. And DFD usage percentage, you'll see that number change as we do a playback. So why don't we do that real quick? Let's do a playback and let's just take a look at some of these numbers. So what I have here is I started working on a little mock-up of one of Debussy's uh, orchestral nocturnes. And about this point, I stopped because I decided to make this video. And so then I just put some large orchestral chords in here. So I got about 20 measures of music. And I tried to use a little bit of every instrument. So a little bit of everything would load into RAM. Okay, so here we go. Let's listen to the playback. All right, let's look at it from Vienna Ensemble's point of view. There's lots of things to look at here. Okay, so over here in the top right hand corner, I have a memory monitor. So 72% of my 48 gigs of RAM is being occupied. Let's take a quick look at the activity monitor. So we have a little bit of pressure on the memory. And you can see that this template fully loaded is taking up 21 gigabytes. All right, so even with every instrument playing back, that's not entirely necessary because I'm not using every single note all the time. So let's fix that. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is 
is the instrument preload buffer size. So before solid state drives came out, most people didn't even touch this. Most people kept this unchecked, and I believe native instruments had this set default at 60 kilobytes, I believe. And when you have it at that setting, So then when solid state drives became affordable and people started buying them to store their sample libraries on, because of the speed of solid state drives and because contact streams into RAM, that's what DFD is, you could start taking advantage of the speed of those solid state drives. So guys started checking this box and moving this to the left, lowering it to 36... 24, whatever, whatever felt right. Because the more you move this to the left, the lower this number is, the less that contact will load samples into RAM and instead keep samples on the solid state drive and stream them. That sounds great because you can save a lot of RAM, right? Well, you can, but the problem is if you do that, it requires extra CPU usage to load the samples from the drive into RAM. So it's a balancing act. What you're making up in for RAM, you're losing in CPU. The other way to go about it is to move it to the right. The number gets higher, we're loading more samples into RAM. That takes less pressure off the CPU and off the drives. So really this is a big balancing act. I'll give you a couple scenarios. Let's say you have an i7 with four cores and you have 32 gigabytes of RAM and you have several solid state drives to hold different parts of your library in. A good number for you might be to move this to the right just a little bit depending on how fast your CPU is. If your CPU can handle streaming then you, know, you can move this to the left. And another scenario, if let's say you have a couple of Xeons and you have a 12 core or you have two machines or whatever, but let's say you're really low on RAM, you only have eight gigs in your machine. Well, and let's say you have some, some flash drives, some, some PCIe based drives like I do. That's a pretty easy call. You would move this to the left. Um, you would use up more CPU and you would make the drives work harder but you would use less RAM in the process. Now as I move this slider, we can see some things change. Right, this number right here is part of this number right here. This is the overall number. This is for this uh, multi right here. So just take a, take a look at this and watch the difference in size. As I move this to the left, it'll go lower. Right? By a lot. If I move this to the right, it raises up. If I were to play back, it would also affect the CPU. So this is something that you'll need to figure out what your system is capable of doing on those three points, the CPU, the RAM, and the drives, and then configure this accordingly. This is a, this is a pretty big deal right here. So here is the most important thing you can do. So as we looked up here, I'm using 70, almost 75% of my RAM of 48 gigabytes. That's pretty ridiculous. I need to bring that down some. So as you build your templates, there's two things I would do as you save your template. Before you do, I would go and purge all samples. So watch this number here. Gone. If you do that to every contact instance, it'll start emptying all the samples out of RAM. That way, the next time you open your template, no samples will be into RAM. And as you start composing, samples will get loaded into RAM. So that way, when you open your template, you're not gonna overload your computer right off the bat. When you're ready to print to stems, there's a different technique. Before you print to stems, 
you really want to optimize your system because you don't want any voice dropouts. You don't want any pops, any clicks. You don't want any spikes, nothing like that. And we can eliminate that. Most of that is based off of having way too many samples loaded into RAM. Sometimes it can be other effects or virtual instruments, but basically it's samples loaded into RAM if you're doing MIDI mockups like this. All right, so this is what we do. So if we take a look at this particular template, my brass and my strings are contact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewind this piece all the way back to the beginning. I'm going to go to each contact instrument or instance and choose reset markers underneath the purge menu. If you just have one instrument, you can do it here. If you have multiple instruments, which I do, go up to this purge menu and choose reset markers. It's the same thing, but it does it for all your instruments. So for single instruments, you could do it here. For multiple instruments, you can do it there. Okay, so I've reset the markers for all my contact instruments. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my VSL instruments. So in Vienna Ensemble Pro, if you have VSL instruments, if you just go to this menu, you can just choose Learn All. And what that's going to do is put Optimize into the Learn mode, which is basically the same thing that we just did with Contact. Although with the VN Ensemble instruments, you only have to do it in one instrument, and it will put every single one of them in learn mode. So you'll, you'll have to do it once. So now we're going to go back to the DAW, and we're going to replay this entire sequence. All right, now that we've played the sequence, we're going to go back to where our instruments are. And I want you to keep an eye on this percentage number. First, I'll go ahead and do contact. So again, we need to select, open each one, and choose update sample pool. And I'll show you on this first one. Watch this number here. It dropped from 300 to 5 megabytes. Why did it do that? Because Contact flagged every sample that was used in that sequence. And every sample that is not being used is being pulled out of memory. Okay, so we've dropped it down to 50%. Now I'm going to optimize all the Vienna Ensemble instruments by choosing Optimize All. Takes a second, but Vienna Ensemble just now went to every single instance of Vienna Instruments Pro and pulled out of RAM all the samples that were not being used. And now you can see that my total RAM usage has dropped from, what was it, 80% down to 44%. And if we take a look at the activity monitor, it reflects that here. It went from 20 to 7 gigabytes. 
I'm going to play back the sequence, just a little bit of it. And you'll see it plays just fine. As a bonus, I want to show you one last tip. If you have a system that has less than 32 gigabytes and you're using large templates like this, you might want to manage some of the memory yourself. With some of the last few versions of OS X, they've included something called compressed memory. And compressed memory is great for MacBook Pros and other Macs that use a little bit less RAM when you have a bunch of apps opening and closing that you're using all day, it helps them load faster because it compresses some of the memory so that way it loads a lot quicker. But when you're doing MIDI mockups, sometimes you need to actually wipe out everything that's in RAM. You don't want everything compressed because you may be starting over from scratch. So here's a tip to completely clear out your memory. So there's three things to keep an eye on. Keep an eye on this number. Maybe look at this last. Right now it's at 44%. But watch the cached files. And you can watch these numbers also. But this is the compressed memory right here. So here is the terminal command that you would use. And I have to say the obligatory, please be careful when you use the command sudo because you're becoming root user and you can do anything you want. So, but just do this command exactly as I do it and it'll be no problem. So, sudo space purge, just like that. Hit return, type in your password. All right, now I'm gonna hit return and keep an eye. So this is 44%, keep an eye on this watch this and then go back and watch that number right there. So while that dropped down to one gig, now 30%. And that does not affect anything that I'm doing. I can hit play and everything's ready to roll. Only the samples that need to be in memory are in memory. Just like before, I just got rid of some extra stuff that had been compressed by the OS when I typed in sudo purge. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that was helpful. Those are the top five or six tips to help you with contact, to help you optimize contact. If you have any further questions, let me know. Leave any comments down below. Please subscribe. And I will see you guys soon with a new video. Got some good stuff coming up for you. All right, guys, take care.